Hello and welcome to the video. This video is all about servos, specifically the difference between analog and digital when you're setting it up in something like iNav. Now this was a question from a patron of mine, a patron called Dave. So Dave, thank you very much for this question. I'm sure if you're asking it, other people are interested as well. Now I have covered this in lots of other videos, so go and check out things like my iNav for beginners guide if this is something that's new to you. But there are a number of settings, as I've just showed, in the output section of iNav specifically around the speed that you're going to talk to the servos at. This doesn't relate to how quickly the servo is physically going to move when it receives a change in the signal, but more how quickly the signal is going to be sent. In ESC land, we can send information faster and faster, and with servos, we can kind of do the same thing. However, there is a big difference between analog and digital, and that's what this is about. So if we go into iNav and have a quick look, we can see here that there are five settings. The first one is 50 Hertz. 50 Hertz is what I would set the standard default to if you're not sure what the servo is, because that's perfect for everything. Analog, digital, whatever it is. So if I've got a really cheap and cheerful plane in to have a review of, it doesn't tell me that the servos are digital. And if it doesn't say, that probably means they're not then I will set it to 50 hertz and be happy with that. However, if it's a digital servo that can run at a much higher speed, then I will normally, if there's no other information around, set it to 100 hertz and see how it performs. Now in the iNav configurator, there are obviously other settings like 160 and 330 hertz, but I never in my hobby based flying here have ever got servos in that would kind of support that because if they did, they'd typically say so. And this is one of the challenges with this is that people will just say, oh, they're digital servos. So if I hear digital, I think, okay, I'll set them to 100 hertz. If they're analog, I'll just set them to 50. Now, why would you go for analog over digital servos? Where would they be used? Well, the answer is pretty simple and straightforward. Analog are cheap, slower, and use less power, but because they're so cheap and cheerful, you tend to find them in lots of places. The old like, blue SG90s and other things are kind of analog servos, typically. Digital servos tend to be a little bit quicker. They tend to have a little bit more torque and they tend to use a little bit more power as well. Never mix and match servos on a plane would be my advice. I, although you can, and then you just have to set everything to run at 50 hertz so that everything is all set at the same speed and the analog servos as well as the digital ones would be happy. When I tend to replace an analog servo, particularly in something like an aileron, I'll swap them both at the same time. It's really important if you have two servos running the same control service whether it's a twin servo elevator or something like your ailerons out in the wings or elevons to always use the same servos too so you tend to find that higher end models will start to come with digital servos most of the more expensive stuff i get in here will have digital in and that's useful because that higher torque and the way it's delivered is different from analog it'll use a bit more power but it's more suited for things like 3D flying and stuff like that. So the golden rule that I use here that's never let me down so far is if it's analog, set it for 50 hertz. If it's digital, set it for 100. And if it says specifically it can handle faster, then do it. How do you know if you've got the wrong speed? Well, if you try and run an analog servo at higher update rates, typically you find the the performance will be a bit jittery. They might get a little bit warm. Similarly, if you run a digital servo at the slower speed, there isn't really a downside apart from the fact that it takes longer for the servo to receive the information and start to move. So that's why if you're in doubt, go with the lower speed. It's safer all round. Last tip I'll give you is if you are replacing five or six analog servos with digital because you want to upgrade the model, maybe you've had a crash, strip one of the plastic gears and one of the cheap and cheerful analog servos that's in there. So you've gone and bought yourself some nice Emacs servos or something else. Keep an eye on the fact that these digital servos do use a little bit more power. So just be careful on that first flight. You don't want to overload the five volt or six volt rail that's running the servos by having all the servos pulling too much current and basically resetting the battery eliminator circuit. Just be aware of that. Make sure, test it on the bench, put all the servos under strain and make sure they work okay. And that's probably the last thing really. So hopefully Dave, that's answered the question for you. Analog, cheap, 
reasonably quick and reasonably low power, but you tend to be a bit slow in terms of the update rates. If you want to have a better performing model in terms of speed and torque, go digital, set it to 100 hertz, and you'll probably find that it'll work great. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Painless 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.